the, we have the um, formerly known as the Boston Main B and M Railroad, now called New Hampshire North Coast Corporation. Um, the railroad tracks. Um, so, and this and this this edge of right away actually goes through a portion of the building here. Um, as you can see uh, the, on the southerly southeasterly corner of this building, uh, the, the railroad right away goes through the building. Um, this was identified uh, in, in pr a previous year by another surveyor, uh, Don Volts of Linden Design. He did an easement plan that actually solved this issue. I think what happened was that this parcel originally came out of four different tracks way back when, when it was purchased from B&M. Um, it was a, a long skinny piece out here. The piece where the freight house now sits and a portion of the freight house is still here. And then you had uh, the depot which sat about here, so there's another lot here. And this lot down here, there used to be a line that went right from here to here. And it was known as the hotel lot. I forget the name of the hotel, but there was a hotel that was located there at one point. Um, so a little bit of history about how the boundaries uh, comprise. But anyways, uh, the applicant is proposing to change the use from a marina to a, to a restaurant use. And um, we recognize that we're on a state highway. We have been in contact with uh, District 6 in Durham regarding our driveway accesses onto this state highway. I've spoken with an individual by the name of Jim Hewitt, who typically handles all the commercial driveway applications through the state. Um, I met with Jim a, a couple weeks ago, and um, he was the one to suggest adding the uh, four-foot landscaping islands that were only four feet off the existing single white line. And the purpose for these landscape islands is, as the state looks at access points, um, typically what they want to do is they want to narrow them down to specific points and they don't want mm -hmm. access on the lot anywhere like if you drive down there now it's paved right from the single white line basically over the, uh, the railroad chain link fence if you will so a lot of people actually sit down the far end of that the, the state um, sees that as a safety hazard so the state really wants to limit their access points yes sir Go ahead. Hey, Lori. Go ahead. How are you? <laughs> so, um, so what we proposed, we we made uh, I made Jim Hewitt of, aware of, of the status of this property, and basically by state standards, they, he can uh, this individual can get up to three curb cuts. One curb cut essentially already exists. It's where there's actually curbing, and where they typically access. Uh, the former Rays Marina here into the high door garage over here. They did a lot of accessing. Of course, formerly they accessed anywhere, but we're proposing to install these landscape islands in front, in front along the building to prevent any vehicular traffic from entering the front yard area here. And we're proposing that all the, the traffic flow be directed down through here through a single lane traffic flow with angular parking here. And, a, and an exit here. So an entrance here and an exit here and the existing uh, curb cut here with any additional parking. Now, um, the applicant only wishes to occupy about um, a third to half of the building. The exact square footage of the restaurants has not not yet been determined on the interior, but he's anticipating only um, less than half of this building would be occupied by the restaurant business. Uh, the other half would be um, left undeveloped and to be determined at a later point where we come back and see you if there was any future development of that. Um, let's see. That summarizes pretty much my presentation. At this point, I'd entertain any questions anybody might have and try to answer them for you. Tim. Uh, what is <coughs> the seat and capacity of the restaurant? Seating capacity. Seating capacity of the restaurant. We talked about 30 seats, 40 seats? Yeah, 30 seats. 30 seats. Each? Um, no, each. It's, it's only the, the, I don't put the seat on the Chinese. No seat on the Chinese. Same day is the what, what What Michael is proposing is uh, uh, two different restaurant styles here. 
It's going to be an American style restaurant that would have 30 seats in it, and there would be a Chinese takeout only, no eat in yeah. on the Chinese takeout. My second question is Does the parking facility, is that going to be adequate for the number of seats in the restaurant? The parking that's shown here, I, I think your parking standard says uh, three seats per space. I so think, I think it's stuff. three seats per space. So if it was 30, you'd need 10 seats plus employees. I think we're showing 14 here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Okay, so there's 14 spaces shown here that are, you know, to be perfectly frank with you, it was, it was a tough design, even though it doesn't look like a, a lot of spaces. But I had to go through a couple different configurations of designs because of the limitations that the right of way presents in this area. We, we have been, I have had conversations, like I guess, with Jim Hewitt and asked him if it was possible because I had another design here where it would be in single flow traffic and have angular parking both sides, which could double the amount of spaces there, but uh, he has not yet agreed to that, so, but we're still in discussions regarding it. And water and sewage? Have you municipal water and municipal sewage. The, the building is hooked up. Have you touched base with the town to make certain that they, we have adequate? There's a response from Dale on the sewer. It might be on the back of. Go back. Keep going that way. Sorry. Okay. It's lost in there a little bit. Okay, thank you. And then Stan has been. Um, I'm here representing the water district. Yes. Yeah. And, and I. We feel that there's no problem with this as long as he abides by all the rules that you know, everyone else has to. And if there's a sprinkle system, obviously they, there's a cost for that. You know, if you can't you can't run that off the same line, you have to be a separate on and on and on. So as long as they're, you know, that's down the line, Father. But we don't see any issues with uh, supplying what we supplied water to as a marina when they were running engines all the time. So I mean, I don't, we don't see a problem with it. May, may I ask um, sure. what did the um, the report from the sewer department uh, cite? Did it cite anything specific or something similar in nature? Thank you. Do have any concerns? Yep. And the sewer usage uses 0.15 gallons per seat for restaurants to determine user fee. Um, he says, the buildings are connected to sewers, there will be no connection fee. Uh, should determine number of seats if sit-down restaurants are calculated. If you take out, if take out may go, have to go by number of bathrooms to try to determine water usage by comparisons. And it does, doesn't seem to be any problems. Thank you. Mr. Brown. Thank you. Um, in terms of the most intense or extensive, pick your word, uh, secondary use. Um, what have you discussed? What traffic that might generate? Uh, and what effect that would have on uh, parking uh, and any additional curb cut request? Um, there would be no additional curb cut request, first of all. There has been discussion regarding down the road, what might be idealistic for them, um, but uh, that's not really that's not what we're that's not what we're trying to permit here tonight. Uh, but we do recognize that this site is limited in space, and the space is going to be utilized by some parking over here. Uh, we could park additional cars over here, so we do recognize that there's a parking standard, and we would not propose anything that. <coughs> volume of traffic in and out of here because it frankly it just doesn't work um, so if that answers your question I, mean, I know I'm being vague about what he's he's talked about but realistically I don't even know if I want to say that because it's just it's so far down the road right now he's concentrating on the, the restaurant business and, and what happens down the road we would come back in front of you for so, but we do recognize that there is limitations to how many parking spaces there are, traffic flow in this small confined area would have to be looked at extensively to make it work. I have actually, I did have something designed on this side 
there is a single flow traffic pattern that I can go around around this little square and, and put a, a parking around the perimeter uh, that, that accounted for about 12 spaces. But I don't show it here because we didn't need it from the side, and we're basically just concentrating on this half of the building. That may I sure. try again? Then there is nothing that you have discussed in in theory that would require any variance as to a use not already included in your present zoning rights. Correct. We, we're not we're not proposing okay. anything at this point, and and we recognize all your rules. And if there was something mm -hmm. any changes, we would go through the appropriate steps and ask mm -hmm. for the, that that relief. And if it was not granted, then we'd work within the rules. Thank you. You're anything more from the board, Peter? Um, the idea, the extent, uh, the uh, facade changes across the, uh, uh, basically across the front. I have to ask Michael that. Uh, Michael, do you have any idea, any changes proposed for the face of the building? Right now, it's the big sh uh, cedar shape shingles. Do you want to uh, change anything on the face of the building? Yeah, I can. And the, I can sure is I uh, have to change the the siding on two suburbs. So do you, will you yeah. change it to plastic, a vinyl, or will you change it to Maybe wood back, or? I try to uh, decide on the bottom, ground on the feet feet, use some uh, housing view, uh, outside, outside wood, the paint oh, on the top, some Outside wood, you say, pressure tree. Pressure tree, yeah, yeah. pressure yeah. tree, the, and up to feet feet on the wall, use it of maybe vinyl siding. Mm -hmm. Vinyl yeah. siding with yeah. horizontal lines all the way across? Is that what you're yeah. suggesting? Okay. okay. Does that answer your question? It's, um, yeah. Okay. You're not going to keep the existing shingles on the building here, take those off and resize it? Take the down. Yeah. They're, yeah. Pretty, they're pretty beat. Half of them are gone anyways. Yeah. It's uh, old. <coughs> I've got a, uh, Bob Bordeaux is could not make it this meeting, and he's re reviewed things, and I'm going to read into the minutes what his some of his thoughts were on this. Um, I would not recommend accepting the application as it is incomplete. The plan lacks adequate parking, propane tank locations, dumpster locations, lighting, signage, and doesn't give a clear direction on development of buildings. On the parking, I would like to see the town assist in freeing up state-owned property so there can be double parking. All the years Ray used this property, registered cars were allowed in these spaces. Also, would the applicant consider taking down the northernmost part of the building, which I assume is the uh, right? The parties proposing the right. Uh, this is it was a former camp turned into a storage. Current ADA regs make this hard to develop and removal will be clean up the lines to provide for an attractive northern entrance. Would applicant consider removing first shop bay that extends closest to road? This bay was an add-on, so removal wouldn't be bad. This could, would clean up the front sight lines, allow for street side parking for takeout, and really assist in the development of the existing bays. So I'll provide you with a copy of this. Thank you. I, I appreciate that. Um, so I think the last thing that was stated, were they, was he referencing this front bay? Here? Right, that bump out in the front, I believe, bump yeah. Bump out in the front. And then he also was requesting that to consider removal of this portion of the building. I think he's talking about the... Um, he said northerly, right? The notch. Right. The very end. The very end, I think. Look at the, that little notch there. Yeah. That there. Yeah. I mean, this is just, you know, it's thoughts. Yeah, okay. So, yeah, so this... This section here used to be what they call the freight house. I, I, I tied into the old highway plan. Yep. So I do believe that this, this portion was an add-on after, and it is storage. Um, I would have to consult, uh, to answer any of those questions, or right. to consult with my applicant, uh, my client, and see how he felt about it. But I want to make sure that he fully understood right. everything that mm -hmm. was being requested. Now, is there a, you know, like, we, there was a uh, signage dumpsters and, and propane tank. We had talked about the propane tank. The propane tank, I'm sure right now, can put on the same, same location before the uh, marina. 
the same spot. Okay. <coughs> same spot with it. So the, mar the marina had a propane tank before, and you put, plugged in and put it back in the same location? Don't yeah, you? it's correct. Okay. In the, in the dumpster, I'm not sure if I'm, the dumpster is shown here, and it's not properly labeled. I'd be happy to do that, but I do show a dumpster with some fencing around it there. Lighting, lighting and signage, and that's the other two concerns he had. There's a small sign right. depicted. Lighting, we have we have discussed, and uh, I could add that to the plan generally yep. pretty easily. And um, signage, uh, we have discussed as well, and uh, that's not on the plan. There's a small that. sign. What's that? You have noted a small sign on there. I have a I have a sign location, but I was actually thinking you wanted to see like. You know what it would look like. You know, China Pond for the post height dimensions. I could add something like that. You know, like a sign detail. Right. I um, have no problem with that. We've actually yes. And per particularly that the person who is doing the electrical work, the person who is doing the sign work, particularly come to the town and get a copy of the sign ordinance uh, and a copy of the uh, lighting requirements. Uh, so that they are uh, aware. They'll be aware of it before. Well, we uh, uh, awareness is nothing. Uh, follow through is everything. <laughs> I'm going to read in some of the all the fees have been paid. We do have some waiver requests, mm -hmm. and I will read the comments from the police, fire, etc. We've done the conversion <coughs> water with her from sewer. Fire department will require four plans to review prior to the beginning of construction phase. Fire department will require access to three sides of the building, no more than 150 feet from any point. Uh, highway department, state maintained road, no concerns. Police department would like to see a 12 foot space between white fog line and landscape buffer. Safety due to vehicle turning and entry. So they suggested, because Jim Hewitt from the state suggested that I install that four foot wide landscape island only four feet off the existing single white line. So that's contradictory to what your police department said. Right. So we got to come up with. Well, happy again, that's a state controlled highway. Understood. <laughs> that's uh, that you can talk I, I would if you're concerned I get a hold of the chief of police okay. and he, he'd be glad to talk to you and he's asked for waiver requests I will he's required he's asking for a waiver on a two-foot topography which is the elevations because it's pretty flat there. There's not too much topography on that. May not have two feet. To work <coughs> may, may not even be able to cover two feet. And the other is a stormwater and erosion control report, which we haven't. That's can't see. It's going to go one place. It has been for how many years? And those are the two re waiver requests he has. May I sure. Speak? My understanding is that the. Uh, stormwater, as you just said, goes basically uh, east. When mm -hmm. it goes east, it goes into the ballast of the railroad. Is that? <laughs> I. <laughs> yeah, it's got to go to the railroad before it gets to the lake. Uh, is it possible to show the present uh, location and direction of uh, of flow without doing a, a full fledged? Yes, uh, I, I could add. I could add. Um, I could add the existing catch basins yeah, on the plan and, and try to show you where uh, the, the existing sheet flow, yeah. how it travels off yeah. the site. I, th I believe that it travels actually across the road. Um, be easier if I. <coughs> I believe there's drainage that, that takes it. I'm not even going to speak to it, but I believe it ends up across the road, runs down the road, and hits a culvert down here and goes underneath. There's a big culvert that comes from this side of the road and empties into the lake over here. Mm -hmm. So I'd be happy to show that on my plan uh, if that would satisfy the boy to justification of that variance. I'd be happy to show that. So 
So what's the board's choice on the waivers? Who sat there? Move that we accept the waivers. I agree. With that, any discussion? The the, uh, yeah, I, I'm content with the the uh, added detail of where the water uh, water yeah. goes. <coughs> All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? A second, if you needed one. I got two over here. Okay. We can go for a third. <laughs> And let's see here. We will condition, condition acceptance of the application. I'll entertain it. Make a motion for conditional acceptance. Second. Uh, any discussion? Are we going for a site plan? Uh, for a site walk? We can, yes. That was the next step of this. I have a second. Any comment? Discussion? That's a uh, public hearing isn't open yet. That'll be after we accept the application. Okay. I have a question. Okay. All those in favor? Should we make it in condition of the site walk? Or no? uh, that the, we'll, they've signed off on that. We'll do, we'll make we'll do, set up an appointment for that. Oh, okay. Yep. Yeah. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? The application's been accepted. Uh, we want a site walk. Good idea. Yep. What's good for everybody here? I work Tuesday, Wednesdays. <laughs> <laughs> You're a little harder than I am. Yeah. <laughs> um, Saturday, a Saturday, ace, any time is good with me. That's March. That's not worth anything. Yeah. <laughs> Mr. Chairman? Yes. Do you have to access the interior of the property at all, or are you, is this just an exterior site walk? And the only reason I'm asking is because uh, Michael told me just before this meeting that he's leaving town this evening for like three weeks, so he wouldn't be here, so... Oh, no, not me, not me. No, no, not oh, me. I, mis I misunderstood him again. Yeah. <laughs> so you'll be here? Yeah, I'll be here. We've got the 16th, 23rd, the 30th, the Saturdays. Um, the 23rd is the, uh, that's the highway cleanup. Cleanup, yeah. Thing. Okay, so that's probably, unless we're going to all be here anyway. We get the 16th. That would work. 16th, 1-6. Um, like the 16th? <coughs> It doesn't matter to me. So, pick one, guys. 16th, what time? Any time on the 16th. Morning, afternoon. We go on the 16th. I like the 16th. Does that sound right with everybody? Say 9 o'clock. The 16th, good. is that good for you, sir? Okay. Okay? Yeah. Let's see what I can get out. <laughs> And it's a conditional <clears throat> acceptance of the application. I'm going to open it up to the public it's for public comment on this. <coughs> <coughs> Feel free. Split your name, please. My name is Gail Pennell. Um, what are they going to be using the north end for on that lot there? You know, you've got the barriers up now all the way up to the guardrails going north. Mm -hmm. Is anything going to be put up? on that north end of this. Are you talking about the, the paved area or are you talking about the building? No, the area going up north. Paved. Mm -hmm. paved. It's paved. paved and there's nothing there. There's nothing it's there. just plain paved area. Is anything planned on going in there? Is that where no. it's too close? The, the short answer is no. Unfortunately, the property is pretty restrictive up in that area that because area. of how narrow it is between the highway and the railroad. Mm -hmm. So it's mm -hmm. very limited. Um, to the north of anything where we show any well, proposed improvements here. Yeah. Because it's going that I, way. But, I, I apologize. Um, but yeah, I just check it. I want to see how far that this is going to go and how far north that will be stopping where there won't be anything up there. We are proposing angular parking for 14 vehicles to the north of the building and then beyond that, nothing. 
So that would be up near the heating, uh, the electrical place there would be as far as where you'd be probably stopping anything and then up from there up would be yes, nothing. Yes, that, that would be an approximation, but yes. Okay. Approximately, I mean, yeah, I'm yeah. just kind of, okay? Yeah, I think that's, that's what I wanted to know. Okay, okay. You? you're welcome. Any more? Larry? Uh, I have three. three I saw three. Three. Sorry, next to you. Um, the concrete barriers, I, they are temporary now, correct? Yes, those those are always considered temporary. And they will be replaced with? Uh, the, in that area, we're proposing to do a, a four-foot wide uh, landscaping island. Basically, what's going to be done is the pavement's going to be removed for four feet wide, and grass is planted in there to prevent any vehicular traffic, just as the concrete barriers are doing now, but it just be much more aesthetically pleasing. Okay, the exit for the parking is, you have that, I, have that I do have it shown on the plan. <coughs> the telephone poles, and we can show you if you'd like to visit on the site walk. We can kind of point some of those. That would be out. great. Is that okay if I if we come to the site walk? You're across the street. Feel free. Uh, <laughs> it's a long walk for us to come. <laughs> <laughs> um, the second thing uh, is there an intent to add any additional lighting um, along along that or there is. Um, there is going to be some change in the lighting, but uh, what we would propose to do would be to add uh, lighting just over the, the door entrances. And if I could show you, I know that the plan's not pointed your way, but I can point it your way and show you what's proposed here is, is raised marina, it's the north like you were talking about. This is the spot that really nothing's going to happen. This is the 14 spaces. So people would actually enter here park here and then they'd walk along the chain link fence along a walkway that's shown here as my pen's following and the Chinese uh, takeout restaurant would be here and there would be uh, an the American restaurant would enter here. We would, we would propose an overhead light here, downward pointed of course, and an overhead above the door of the Chinese food restaurant. Is there any lighting, additional lighting being proposed beyond the building? And on this gable end, th this, is, this is a, uh, a a new proposed deck that's, that we're proposing here for uh, outdoor eating. And he did talk about one light up at the top <coughs> and shine down over that deck. Okay. And that will be, so it doesn't, that will be on all night or just on during, during open hours? That would be on only oh. during open hours, right? Yeah, open hours. Which are, what are the hours? Hours of operation. What time would you be closing the American restaurant? Seven, yeah, eight. seven, not seven, eight, something like that. Okay, depending. <coughs> uh, fence is the intent to replace the fence the along, chain, the, along the chain link fence or repair the fence along the along the tracks. There's, there's been no discussions of that nature. That fence is actually owned by B and M Railroad, so we would have to get uh, we would have to get an agreement with them if anything like that was to happen. <coughs> If we were to propose any improvements to it. So we haven't discussed that. I'm not sure if it's out of the question, but we can talk about it again. I don't think we're gonna I think we'll be back here next month anyways. Maybe we can answer maybe we have that answer for you then. Okay. Uh, one last piece was there are three new businesses that have just gone into the area. The Dollar General and Dunkin' Donuts, the ice cream shop across the way, and now this. Is there a concern with Traffic with now three additional businesses right, right there in one spot. And it's not really stretched out much because it's all. It looks like your entrance is going to be at the Dollar General end, and the exit will be at the at the ice cream shop end. Well, I think w when it comes to safety and access, the uh, District Six in Durham would actually they're going to review that uh, to to make sure that it is a safe access point. But I, it's my belief that the businesses aren't going to draw the traffic. The, 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 business, the businesses get their business off the traffic that already goes through there. But um, I, I don't believe it's going to increase traffic volume down White Mountain Highway. I'm, I'm not necessarily concerned about volume. I'm concerned about the safety. Access points. Access turning. You know, I, can, I can tell you that I, I tied into the highway layout. And this is a long and very long curve. Uh, the radius is in excess of 2,000 feet, so this, 
long and the short of it is they're long straight sight distances, so you can see vehicular traffic for quite so quite a ways. I believe the speed limit in this area is 30, 35. So it's not it's not in like 40 miles an hour. It's 30. It's 30 in this area. So <coughs> I understand your concern, but at the same time, I think this this. I'm not the one going to get, we get in an accident. I'll be the one calling. Uh, hello, thank you. Might want to have somebody come pick these folks up there. Crashed in there. I just for the, for my kids, I just wanted to make sure that we're, the question was raised and to the satisfaction of the town that, that, that they're okay with it. Not, not really an issue for me. The lighting is the issue, and the question of what was going on with the. You just you're in a butter across the street, sir? The one house, the one house across, surrounded by now three businesses. <laughs> I think you'll see that District 6 will have a say in where that will go. That's, everything's tentative in what District 6 will tell us from the state, Division 6. Steve. Um, I want to thank the Planning Board for inviting the Conservation Commission. We appreciate it. And uh, Mike, I want to thank you for buying that building because I think this is really a potential asset to the town if it's done right. Um, Ray's Marina was a visual disaster for the center of the town, and this has the potential to really um, to make the, the town center a lot better than it is now. Um, I just wanted to say that I'm not that concerned about parking because there seems to be so much extra at the Dollar General that although it does involve a walk across the street, which I'm sure some folks won't like, I can't imagine there's there's going to be a real shortage of parking unless all these businesses really take off. So I'm not concerned about that. Uh, I, from a, a perspective of conservation, the amount of impervious surface that's downtown concentrated in this area isn't good because we get we basically get untreated drainage off the roads going right into the ponds. And it would be really nice if we could do something to alleviate that, and I don't know what that is. But in that strip along the along the river to the north of the, uh, the the unutilized strip to the north, it would be really nice if something could be done about that impervious surface. Perhaps not entirely at your expense, but um, something that would would turn that into a buffer, so that anything that was potentially draining through there would effectively be filtered, and um, and also so that it visually it was attractive. <coughs> planting growth. I know that there has to be some cooperation on the part of the railroad. Uh, that fence is really ugly and it's theirs. And so it would be nice if we could twist their arm a little bit to have some respect for the town. But I do think this is really potentially a great project. And, uh, and I'm sure it's a financial challenge. And I wish you the best. <laughs> Try. Yeah. Yeah. Mr. Chairman, may sure. I, is, are there any funds within the Conservation Commission to actually uh, help mitigate some of this uh, impervious surface because uh, Michael, the applicant right now, is incurring quite a bit of cost sure. that he didn't anticipate due to the nature of the construction of the business and what he has to do to bring it up to code. So internally, he's he's struggling financially to make this thing work. Right. Externally, we're trying to do as little as possible, already being required to do this four-foot um, landscape buffer it, it is within what he considers reasonable. I, I agree with your idea 100%, but at the same time, there would be some significant cost that would be incurred with removing that pavement and tearing it I don't think he's opposed to it either. Yeah, no, I'm sure. I, I think actually one solution to it, uh, there are a couple steps, but uh, one potential step is that you deed it to the town so that it's no longer your issue and there and and the town can then, as it requires finances to do it, <coughs> uh, could, could take that on. Uh, because it's really not of value to you. It's not a usable, it's not really a usable space, except if you convert it into something like an outdoor portion of a restaurant, which was made attractive. And I don't even know if there's enough room for that. It would be sort of funny how it would interact. You'd have the parking in the middle uh, between the know, between where this, the, this outside seating would be. So it's a little strange idea. But getting rid of it would be, would be um, one possibility. In terms of the funds, the conservation fund's use is restricted by state law. It, it has to be a conservation purpose. <coughs> and I think it would actually take 
a lawyer to determine if those funds could be used for that purpose. I really don't know. Secondly, I can't speak for the Conservation Commission because it has to, it has to be the commission as a whole that votes on a proposal and we need the legal stuff. But, um, but it's a possibility. I, I, I certainly don't think we could do something like that. But I think the town would be willing to, to do something like this in time because it, it turns a liability into an asset. And we want to have an attractive town center. We want it to be attractive to businesses. We want people to come here and be wowed. And you know, property values go up. And you know, in general, there's a lot of change that could happen in the town center that would be positive. So um, those are my thoughts, but I can't give you any anything concrete. Thank you, sir. Some, yeah. uh, an avenue to investigate yeah. on both parts. So thank That's you. right. Stan? Uh, just for an FYI, the railroad easement, the right away, mm -hmm. many, many moons back. Mm -hmm. And the water district came across a couple incidents that it's more than just the right away. They actually own it. Yeah, they feet title on it. Right, so I mean, that your right. idea is not going to work because the railroad, I think you're going to find that northerly end, the railroad has the right away ownership of that property. Off that area, they seem to have. No, not, I have um, plans done by the railroad. Uh, in, uh, survey at Ainsworth out of Massachusetts, who was hired by B and M back in the '50s, and he had actually surveyed these pieces and delineated these lines very specifically along here to the point where it was actually easy to put together for us from a land, from a land surveyor's perspective. Um, it's very clear that there is ownership. It's only. 18 feet wide over here, right? Okay, and probably 25 feet wide right here, but there is clear fee title ownership uh, that goes through the Rays Marina title into Michael, and, and um, the railroad owns what is the width that they had? That the tracks are five feet. Uh, the width escapes me. All I can say is I dealing with them. They're not flexible at all. <laughs> I don't know. They won't let you do anything on their land, but they don't. They don't. They don't know any customer at all. They did. Yeah, it and they it sold it. They did own it. They sold it. Yep. And I can show you the plans that I have for '54 when they did. And for the right for 18 feet is actually uh, enough space for for some buffering, you know, water buffering with, with grass and and plants. So uh, it could actually be used as a uh, as a as a drainage. I don't know how much water you can put through something that's 18 feet and has the right kind of plants. But I do have a catch basin shown right here. I looked in it, and um, is it still there? I mean, this there is a catch basin down here. I'm not sure if this feet. There's one. I think there's one directly across the street. It's right. It's right near the end of the guardrail. Right. Yeah. And I'm not sure how they connect. That. There might be one across the street. I'm not sure if this exits into the lake there or not. But I'll look at it based upon the request of the. Uh, Knowing where the sheet flow goes, I'll look into that and have that answer for you next month. Yeah, I'd like to also echo Larry's uh, note about uh, about the lighting and signage that they be attractive and the light that the light be directed down, which you know, it's, it's in the ordinances, so it should happen. Um, question of ignorance is, but is backlit signage allowed in this town? Backlit uh, signs that are illumin illuminated signs. It's illuminated from within or from within. light shining on them? From, with, from within. No. No? No. So it's only can, it only can be illuminated from the ground? Not from up. the ground. Top down. Top down. Top down only? Yep. That's what your ordinance reads? Mm hmm can't put, You can't put lights inside, right? You can't yeah. put lights inside, in a sign. It's right? a lot. I right. basically say light right now on my restaurant. Same thing, stop. An open sign. Yeah. In a window. Not that. that, lights that, up. that. On, on the roof, on the uh, common farm, I put the sign over there. The same thing, I move the corner street. It's a. He, he the sign he's talking about is a, is a flush mounted sign on the face of his building right. above his a access. We're talking about now, we're talking about the existing China right. Pond beside Cumbies. That's, a, that's an illuminated sign. Uh, may I have the chairman's permission to step down from the board and join the public? 
<laughs> no, you stay right where you are. Uh, but, uh, <laughs> if you'd like. To, uh, speaking as a, a member of the, uh, of the public and not uh, as a planning board member, uh, I have specifically, and I would like to think courteously, closed my eyes to every circular neon sign that I see in an open uh, business window in our community uh, to protect the value of the small businesses we have. If you ask me as a planning board member, I would give you a different answer. Thank you. Understood. <coughs> well, it gets sketchy. Yeah. <laughs> Any more public comment? Again, when this comes back in the next meeting, he'll have all the stuff that he knows what he needs to know shown and presented. Yep. Mr. Chairman, may I ask a technical detail? You gave me uh, a conditional acceptance of the application. Of the, of the application, I right. understand that, but like, what is the condition within the acceptance of the application? Everything we talked about, we talked about they're, they're not showing on the plan. When right. you so come back with it. Essentially an acceptance. The time clock starts now. i got to hurry up, get, get this stuff, and get it back to you next month. Yep. All right. Okay. Anything else from anybody? On to the next part of the agenda. Thank you. Are we still are we still open, Mr. Chairman? Should we should we make a uh, motion for continuance? We can do that. Just yeah. date, date specific, so we don't have to be yeah. notified. <coughs> we'll pick a date. Mr. Washington, done any of these? Yeah. <laughs> Months, years. May third. Next meeting. We'll continue this to May third at six thirty. May third. Thank you. Thank you for your time, Frank. Thank you. Give you enough time. Yep, I think we can iron out some of the some of the things. Hopefully, we'll come back with a uh, <coughs> decision by DOT yep. by that time as well. So we'll be full board ready to make make sure you satisfy the chief of police. I, I will check with him. I will contact him prior to going over a meeting with Jim Hewitt to make sure that yep. I can say he's saying this, you're saying this. Let's find some place right. where things happen. Right. right. He's okay to talk with a very nice man. The okay. chief is. <laughs> Thank you. Should I come in to see you about the comments that were written by the planning board member that were not available? There you go. You're good. There you go. <laughs> Thank you. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Bigger fonts. Maybe I'll just get one. <laughs> yeah, you are. Who knows what it's made? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That's eight egg rolls, right? <laughs> 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 I went I went today to see about getting something for lunch and he's closed. <laughs> what are you closed for? He had to take his in-laws to the airport at midnight last night. I'll be home at oh. three o'clock this morning. <laughs> oh, that's a good reason to close. Yeah. C and J. Yeah. Yeah, that's easier. Yeah. <laughs> it is. Oh yeah, I know. To My wife wants to go for all the hills. I drive to Dolan, that's it. Yeah, I get stuck in traffic. You notice how I live, you went to that one. Yeah. Thank you. 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 Everybody's read it. And the second part is the cost. What we would like to see, what would cause it to go into capital improvements. We've talked ten thousand. We've talked twenty-five thousand. Well, it's important that 
the timelines match because this is a non SB2 right. basis. So uh, the most important thing we could do if, is, uh, is make sure that the timelines that we adopt match notification and the warrant article preparation. Right. Okay. Um, so plug in those dates in. Is as important, maybe right. more important than the dollar amounts. Yep. So we need to leave enough time for us, but uh, mm. clearly we need to leave probably more than enough time on the far end mm -hmm. because our proposal will go to the selectmen and then they have to do something with it. Right. And we'll probably, have, most likely, when we do it, we'll have a public hearing anyway. Right. Mm -hmm. Mr. Chairman? Yeah. Yes. If the school has to be involved, and someone might want to try to light a fire under the school board because nobody has done much about it with this proposal at all. Well, I've got to, I'm going to, uh, Mr. Woodruff, I'm going to try to gain his employment, so to speak. It's a part time plan, and I think he's pretty good at lighting fires. I hope so. Yeah. And I've talked to Doug Shute, he came in today and he wanted to know if we'd we would need a school representative on the CIP. And I said, well, the CIP committee is the planning board. So I said, you're, you're more than welcome to attend any of the meetings, but we're, we haven't, we haven't, we're not going to, I believe, set up a CIP committee. It's just going to be the planning board. Right. That's a good idea, but they haven't done anything about it. No. Yet. No. Frustrating. Do they, they? We have a meeting the 13th, and I'm sure, I think Bruce Lee, the 12th? Doesn't matter. Oh. It's the 13th, right? Hmm. I don't remember. Oh. No, it's Tuesday. Okay, 12th. It's during yeah. the day. Yeah. Mm. Well, no, we have one in the school, but we have, the planning board has another no. meeting this month. Oh, yeah, that one? That's what I'm talking about. No, okay. that's the 19th. The 19th? Yeah. Planning okay. board workshop is the 19th. The 12th, I think, is your department head's meeting. Yeah, 12th and 13th. Which yeah. um, Superintendent Tersey has been invited to, I yep. think. Now, last night at the selectmen's meeting, they talked about hiring Bruce for the economic thing. Thank you. So, yeah. That kind of I, I haven't talked to Bruce about economic development, but I will. Yeah. Mr. Mr. Brown. Um, I read over this, and uh, my observation, I don't know how accurate it is, is that the, the Moulton Borough form and our own uh, seem to be about the difference between six and a half a dozen. Yep. yep. Oh, okay. <laughs> That's what it, uh, the last meeting with, with uh, Bruce, it, it was, he just, it, it basically, the department heads have put this together and it's pretty much complete. It's just getting the formality of this taken care of, the charge, the, the uh, project costs, etc. Um, and our when, if, and is it necessary uh, to have a conversation about what the size and definition of the capital expense uh, will be? Who do, who do that? We, again, we're meeting, the department has a meeting next week. They will, because they, they're going to be discussing the same things we will be discussing about this, mm -hmm. the, the amount, the size of the capital improvement, et cetera. And that, when that gets done, we'll bring that back to our next meeting, which will be the 19th. 19th. Okay. <coughs> so within a week, we'll know at that next meeting what. Be because there's, from what I think I read, there's the crossover on what the cost of, say, a pickup truck is and what the cost of a police a cruiser uh, right. is. Uh, one might be 33, one might be 34. Neither one of them is 20 or 25. Right. So on that basis, you know. Well, that, that would be your base cost. Yeah. So that, that, you'd say 10000 anything over $10,000 would be going to capital improvement. Right. The, the, con the figure that was in our discussions was twenty five. Right. Yeah. So we'll be seeing that next week and bring it to us on the 19th. So then I would, do we want to work on a master plan? Larry has presented us with some thoughts. 
that, uh, um, yeah, uh, it's, uh, uh, it's all my son's fault um, in that I got a Chromebook and I have actually figured out how to backspace and not eliminate the entire paragraph that I have written. Uh, <laughs> 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 you learned about spell check? That, <laughs> that uh, what I actually spell check is not the problem. Brain check is the problem. <laughs> but um, I uh, I went over the the stuff that uh, uh, Jerry Coogan uh, had put together, uh, and the the policy ease that it was it was written in, uh, and so what crossed my mind is. For the last 25 years, there has been no good history of how the town uh, developed from the, from the first roads and the dams, uh, what the impact of the road conditions uh, are, where development has taken, taken place, how de development is cons constrained, and particularly, uh, as you will find uh, under the um, uh, I have, one is the, the settlement of the town, which is the land use, the history, and the economic geography. Uh, then there's an introduction, uh, and then there is, I redid the vision statement because I didn't, didn't like it, but the, the one on top in my uh, packet is commerce and its zones, uh, which just starts out talking about the zoning map uh, being uh, updated. The, uh, the history of problems on curb cuts, uh, what happened to the town when the Spalding Turnpike did open uh, and it ended congestion, and as I, I say tongue-in-cheek, uh, it ended downtown congestion and a good deal of downtown. Yes. Uh, and, uh, but there has not been really a review of, of what we lost in terms of the two delicatessen convenience stores, the four retail stores, the hardware, the luncheonette, the, the restaurants, the bait shop. I swear there were two bait shops. Yeah, uh, were. Um, the video rental, two video rentals, uh, the health club, the gym, the bank branch, uh, and the, the church. And I lumped the church uh, in with all of those losses uh, because uh, not only did we have the um, um, the opening of the Spalding, but we also had the recession of, uh, of, uh, of 2008. And uh, I also uh, tried to set a, a balance in what, I did not get to exit 18 uh, yet, but I tried to set a balance of the, the various pressures for development at exit 17. Uh, what the final official zoning map may see, the um, uh, the some of the we have the curb cuts and then you have the nature of side roads and I don't know where the commercial lands are down on the Kegney and how you get to them by not you know going through Exeter. <laughs> that was one of our better jobs in spot zone. Remember that one, the Kegney Road, the commercial along Ugly Bridge. Yes, you do. <laughs> yes, you do. <laughs> but uh, I'm, I'm no offense to, to, to Exeter, but, but just um, giving someone a sense of, of how uh, the vision of the, uh, of the town uh, developed and, and what it uh, uh, may, may mean and how this might fit together. For I've only gone as far as the land use um, because um, that's as far as Jerry Coogan went. I went back to the work that Jack Meaty had done in 2012, and I think I quote him because he had a lovely uh, comment on why people uh, come uh, to Milton. Uh, he also talked about the fact that since 1950, with all of its troubles and difficulties, <coughs> Milton has continued to gain population uh, faster than the county, and when the county was going up twice, uh, twice it, it w when the county was doubling its population, we were quadrupling uh, ours. And, and that's with the cost of the living for the state of New Hampshire, that is 118% of the national average. 
So it's just fascinating, fascinating <coughs> stuff uh, 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 to do. Okay. Number five is the uh, approval minutes from March 1st, 2016. Any motions? So moved. I'll have a second. Discussion? Not hearing any. All those in favor? So voted. Uh, March 22nd, 2016. Workshop minutes. I have a second. Second. Discussion? Not hearing any. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Other business? You missed public comment. Sorry. <laughs> what do you got, Eric? Um, I actually had a comment on the master plan. You didn't see me waving my hand then. Because I didn't wave it enough. Well, listen, wasn't the public hearing on it anyway. Yeah. <laughs> um, and uh, I, I am the chair of the Economic Development Committee, so I want to make it clear that I'm speaking as a citizen and not on behalf of the EDC. Um, I also have read the draft that Jerry Coogan put together for the update of the master plan. And I noted that it went into very specific detail on economic development plans that had been put together actually before I joined the committee. But um, and just personally, <coughs> and not as the EDC, but personally, I felt that those details were too specific for a master plan. And I think that if you look close at them, they also create some loopholes where they actually contradict some of the other things that are in the vision statement. So I just wanted to Thank you. share my opinion. And hopefully Mr. Woodworth's going to be working with us on this. Nothing else other than the business? Bobby's not here, so we're giving it to you. I make a motion to adjourn. Do I have a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Stand up and leave. Thank you. Did I, go, did I do a good job as You Bobby? did good job. <laughs> <laughs>